Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another Tech Gym video. Well, scratch that. It turns out when you put Jim in your channel name and you're not talking about gyms, it's a terrible idea. So, oops. My new channel name is Never Enough Tech. It's a fine name, very sturdy. This video is gonna be a bit different. I have a YouTube story I'd like to share and I'll sprinkle in some tech advice. A few nights ago, I got an email that my last video was designated as inappropriate content. You might be wondering, what kind of scintillating tech video could be deemed inappropriate? Well, I'll tell you, in that video, I shared some advice on how to get your Mac to recognize your SSD when it's not mounting. See, perhaps I'm naive, but I thought providing some advice on how to recover perhaps hundreds of hours of work um, would be a benefit. Turns out I was wrong. I'll tell you right now, my method worked for me. It'll probably work for some of you, not all. I didn't tell people to go download some scammy software. The method only uses built-in OS functionality. Now you might be saying, well, probably a bot just screwed up and deemed it inappropriate because that's what bots do. Well, I appealed and a human looked at it and still designated it as inappropriate content. So in this video, I'll be sharing my method that hopefully works for some, some, not everyone, for some, and I'll be describing my last video and maybe you can tell me why it got pulled. YouTube gave me absolutely no specifics. So I think, you know, punishing people and then not really telling people why they got punished is a great teaching method. Bravo. That was a sarcastic comment. Well, here's where I should make fun of myself. Actually, when I was about to post this video, I gave the email a closer look and it did say I might be violating the spam, deceptive practices and scam policies. So the video starts with a doodle of a guy sitting at a desk, supposed to be me, and my channel name. Perhaps doodles are spammy, though I see lots of doodles on YouTube. Next, I show my Mac screen and I explain that I plugged in my SSD and it's not showing up in Finder. So then I go to Disk Utility, which is a native application for OS X, and I see that my SSD is grayed out. The files are not accessible. I press Mount. That doesn't work. I press First Aid, and it gives you this kind of scary error that says, hope you backed up your SSD. So at this point, I would expect some people to be stressed out, especially if they lost hours upon hours of creative work. It's a little bit traumatic. So this next cut is maybe where I got into trouble. I showed some stock video of a moody guy just kind of looking over a river. Next to him, I put the seven stages of grief. Perhaps YouTube thought I was making light of grief. So maybe I was being a little insensitive. But a simple YouTube search shows similar concepts. For instance, the stages of grief for a bad haircut. To be honest, it's only kind of a half joke anyway, because I think it is a little traumatic when you lose a bunch of hard work. So then I go on to explain and I say, you don't need to be sad. Maybe I should have said, perhaps you don't need to be sad because I have a solution. And I probably should have said, maybe I have a solution that works for you. Anyway, I go on and say, hey, there's a solution. And the solution is surprising. Use Windows 10. This is where YouTube might be thinking, oh, this guy is doing a Microsoft commercial and not telling his viewer. So my fix is a little surprising, maybe it's hard to believe, but it definitely worked for me. What I suggested you do is take your SSD and plug it into a PC, if you have one. Find a friend's. When I did this, I was immediately able to see my SSD mounted and access my files. Not only that, I had an option to fix the error that it found. It's very simple, you select a pop-up on the bottom right of the screen, and then you select scan and fix. It takes just a few minutes and then safely eject. So after I explained my PC experience, I said, run hopefully back to your Mac. And I showed a couple holding hands with sunset in the background. Perhaps this was too suggestive, but its intent was clearly to kind of reflect the positive feelings you might get when you think you're getting all of your data back. I will say there are plenty of other videos on YouTube of couples interacting on the beach doing more than holding hands. So maybe that's what did it, I don't know. 
So in the next cut, I say I'm plugging in my SSD and it shows up in Finder. My problem was fixed using the method I just described, my problem. Again, I'll say this method worked for me and it might work for you. I do think it's safe to try. So in the last cut, I said there are only three more steps if this worked for you. Like, comment, subscribe. Again, tongue in cheek, maybe YouTube thought I was blackmailing my viewer. I'm so perplexed. Maybe it's my thumbnail that was promising too much. I wish YouTube would just tell me. Anyway, that's my video. Hope you got something out of it. Perhaps you weren't paying attention to me at all because you're just entranced with my fancy new iPad case. It floats. Keep your eyes open for my review. Catch you on the next one. I don't want to waste your time. If you're here for my suggestion on how to deal with an SSD that is not mounting on your Mac, here it is. If you have a PC, plug your SSD into it. Look for a notification on the bottom corner of the screen that there is a problem with this drive. Again, don't download any third-party software, just use the native Windows 10 disk repair feature. If you don't see the pop-up, I suppose my suggestion does not work for you and seek advice from another source. If you do see this pop-up, select Scan and Fix in the next pop-up window, then wait until the scanning and repairing progress bar is complete, then safely eject. After this, plug it into your Mac and check to see if the SSD mounts. These set of steps work great for me whenever I ran into this problem with my SanDisk SSD. I can't promise that it will work well for you, but I do believe it to be safe and it is one possible solution to a stressful problem. So if that's all you needed, I hope that helped you. Moving on with my analysis of why my video got pulled. So about being spammy, scammy, or deceptive. Spam. My video was original, not in coordination with other individuals or some broader initiative. Definitely not spam. I had one link off YouTube and that was my Twitter handle. Compare that to other YouTubers that may have many affiliate links. I'm not judging them, good for them. Just trying to put my material in context. Scammy. My video, as I mentioned, suggests using only native Windows software. Again, I did not tell users to go download some special third-party software or give me personal information so that I might fix it for them. I get zero, absolute zero benefit from my users using a PC. The only benefit I get from this video are views and subscribers, and that is most likely to occur if I give them advice that works which I am 100% trying to do. I think scam is completely ridiculous here. Deceptive. I think there may actually be a case here. I was definitely not being maliciously deceptive, but I think it could be argued that I was giving off an aura of the solution as opposed to a solution that may or may not work. If YouTube just said something like this, I would be annoyed but be overall satisfied that I got some concrete feedback from which I can become more knowledgeable about how to operate. 